Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at a new theory for Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. Many people online have been theorising over the potential twist that Ollie, the little boy who guides us through the new chapter, and Big Bad, the prototype, are one and the same. While I'm unsure if this is the case, in this video, we are going to consider the story ramifications if true, and evidence for this narrative choice. So sit back, relax, and let's explore a theory investigating how Ollie may be related to the prototype. Okay, so let's begin by quickly explaining what we know so far about the prototype, as well as some speculation on who this mysterious entity may be. The prototype, as the name suggests, was seemingly the first experiment in the Bigger Bodies Initiative program. This was a research experiment spearheaded by scientist Harley Sawyer. My name is Harley Sawyer. I'm called the Doctor. I'm here now with a solution. The Bigger Bodies Initiative. Giant toys. Put me in charge of it, and I will save this company. The Bigger Bodies Initiative took the brain and nervous system from a person via way of an advanced surgical procedure, and then transplanted it into the body of a giant toy. By fusing the consciousness of the human to the toy, Playtime Co. scientists were able, through the magic of science, to create giant living toys like Huggy Wuggy. They then began using the children of the Home Sweet Home Orphanage as test subjects in these experiments. For a long time now, I have speculated that Playtime co-founder Elliot Ludwig was used in the original prototype experiment. We still don't know exactly why this happened, but I did make a theory around the release of Chapter 2 where I discuss this, so check out that video for a detailed breakdown. It now seems that Elliot, as the prototype, is out for vengeance. As the prototype, he influenced the other bigger body experiments to run riot and kill all of the adult workers at the factory, during an event known as the Hour of Joy, which occurred on August 8th, 1995, roughly eight years prior to the story that unfolds in the game. Elliot most likely caused this catastrophic killing spree as a way to punish those guilty of both experimenting on innocent children and himself. Elliot's always loved kids, and sought to protect them. However, the Hour of Joy ended up claiming the lives of adults both guilty and innocent, as the toys wreaked havoc indiscriminately. The prototype also seems to be able to mimic the voices of others, almost like an AI of sorts. We've seen how he takes the bodies of fallen toys such as Mommy, Huggy, and Catnap, and assimilates them into his being. After doing so, it seems this entity is then able to mimic their voice, as heard in this audio log. Ready to talk now, are you? I possess... A question. Go ahead. Do you... feel anything? You stick us. Beat us. Tear at flesh. Do you feel it? Absolutely. I learned something new about you every day. Ollie is the voice of a little boy who guides our protagonist through the depths of the playcare during the story of Chapter 3. He seems very friendly and eager to help with a mission to stop the prototype, alongside assisting Poppy, who claims to have the same goal. I know you're probably mad at Poppy for not letting you escape, but she needs you. We need you. You are our mission. Together, we can save a lot of people, including you. Oh, and by the way, my name is Ollie. Nice to meet you. However, we never actually see Ollie during our adventure. He instead acts as a disembodied voice, communicating to us over the telephone. If we are to believe that Ollie is indeed a child, and not simply the prototype mimicking the voice of a test subject, then we must consider a major fact. No one has visited the factory in over eight years. 
which would mean that Ollie, who still sounds like a young child, would have been a baby at the time of a catastrophe. Now this is possible as we do see cribs in the orphanage, but how would a child survive for so long trapped in the depths of such a dangerous place? Unless of course, he had someone to look after and raise him. So let's discuss how Ollie's survival or potential connection to the prototype would totally change our perception of the story Poppy Playtime has told up to this point in time. If Ollie is in some way related to the prototype, then this has major ramifications for the story we think we knew of Poppy Playtime. When we consider how Poppy Playtime herself spoke to Ollie, she seemed to already know him and instantly trust him. She didn't warn our protagonist to have any less than full faith in this child's assistance. In fact, she actively encourages us to follow Ollie's guidance. We can't stay here. Keep yourself safe. Ollie will call you. Poppy doesn't seem to lack intelligence. In fact, of all the living toy experiments we've encountered, she seems to be the most cognizant of them all. With all of this in mind, wouldn't it make sense to assume that Poppy had done her research on Ollie beforehand? So she would know who he was and if he could be trusted. Otherwise, her entire plan to stop the prototype could fail. Unless Poppy isn't actually trying to stop the prototype at all. When we think back to how we came to return to the old toy factory where our protagonist had worked over eight years ago, it all started with a note. A note that seemingly was written by Poppy herself, as it included childlike writing and an image of the Poppy flower. It even told us to follow the flower, and by doing so, we were led directly to Poppy's location where we were able to free her from her prison within this glass case. But something doesn't add up here. Firstly, how could Poppy have written this note and mailed it out to us if she was trapped inside this case the entire time? And secondly, how was it that this case held her for over eight years? It wasn't even locked when we opened it. We've always assumed that Poppy was under some kind of sedation while inside this case, as she seems to wake shortly after we open it. But again, this doesn't really make sense. Why would she be asleep simply because the case was sealed shut? Was there some kind of spell put on this case to seal her inside and keep her suppressed? It could be, of course, that Ollie wrote this note, and the prototype put some kind of hex on the case to stop Poppy from escaping. But things don't really seem to be adding up here and don't quite make sense, do they? Unless we consider a new theory, that Poppy and the prototype are working together, with a goal to lead our protagonist down into the depths of the factory and use them to end the terrible experimentation started by Playtime all those years ago. If Elliot Ludwig is indeed the prototype, then it makes sense that he would be trying to free the children who became subject to such cruel experimentation. We know that Marie Payne, for example, was the little girl trapped inside Mommy Longlegs, a character we finally destroy at the end of Chapter 2. Catnap was once a little boy called Theodore Gramble, and we destroy Catnap at the end of Chapter 3. While Huggy's identity is unknown, we destroyed him at the end of Chapter 1. And it seems Kissy, who was once the little girl seen in this picture, may have fallen into a trap and been destroyed at the end of Chapter 3. So one by one, each of the bigger body experiments, containing the consciousness of the playtime orphan victims, are being laid to rest, and in the process, the child trapped inside set free. This may have been Elliot's plan this entire time. We know the prototype tried to free these children. In fact, we have a first-hand account of him trying to save the life of Theo. So when all else failed, it seems Elliot, as the prototype, is now using our protagonist as a kind of exterminator. Someone who could come in and free these poor souls from their torment inside these bigger bodies. Mercy kills, if you will. Poppy, who also contains the consciousness of a child, or perhaps worker such as Stella Graeber, someone who sympathised with the fate of these poor kids, would then be working with the prototype to see this plan to fruition. But they would have to execute this plan in a way that would make it seem like they were on the side of the protagonist, trying to help him escape. Before he died, Dog Day referred to the protagonist as Poppy's angel, 
someone who was sent for to save those left alive within the plague hair. You, you're a Pappy's angel. Come to save us. This adds further evidence to this theory. We also hear from an audio log from Mr. Light that the children did not befall the same fate as the adults during the Hour of Joy. Catnap told her that the children were safe, in a place where they could not be harmed by the rabid Bigger Body toys. Please, where are the children? Are they... in the same place as the employees? No. Are the children safe? Yes. Oh. Can I see them? No. And that was it. That's all he'd tell me. Probably because he knew I'd kill them all. <laughs> this tells us that the orphans who had yet to be experimented on may still live on inside the building. And as we know the prototype had tried to help Theo escape, it isn't far-fetched to believe that he could have used Catnap to round up these surviving children during the Hour of Joy and take them to a safe place place. We do in fact see Catnap approaching the Home Sweet Home Orphanage during this clip from the Hour of Joy videotape. So Ollie may not actually be a voice coming from the prototype, but rather one of the surviving children, kept alive down here for eight years under the prototype's care and now serving him to help free the rest of the child survivors. All of this would have major story ramifications, as it would paint the prototype in a very different light. If this entity is indeed Elliot Ludwig, then it would be in character. Elliot was a man who wanted to help the children of the world, to bring joy to those who felt like they had no place to belong, the orphans under his care. This seems to have gone terribly wrong when he became subject to Playtime's own experiments as the prototype the template for all child test subjects that would follow. And now Elliot's mission is to enact vengeance on the evil corporation he once owned, seemingly killing off all workers at the factory, whether they were good or bad. In his vengeful state, Elliot only saw compassion for the children he had always sought to protect. Now Poppy and Elliot work together to free the souls trapped inside the living toys and lead the protagonist to the bottom of the factory where the remaining orphan survivors hide under his protection. With the dangers above now dwindling thanks to the protagonist's help, the prototype can finally release the survivors back into the outside world. And yes, that's quite a lot to consider and there's still more questions that do remain. For example, who is our protagonist beyond a nameless ex-employee of the factory? I believe our hapless hero may have a dark past and be connected in more ways than we currently know, and there is evidence to back these musings up. But that will have to wait for a future video. For now, I hope you enjoyed the theory presented here today. Let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.